Hi everyone, welcome to virtual community meeting number three for the East Honolulu Watershed Management Plan, which will describe the plan's proposed policies, projects, and strategies. My name is Abby Seitz. I am with SSFM International, a consultant for the Board of Water Supply. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, this presentation and all other materials about the plan's proposed policies and projects will be available at the website provided on this slide. In this presentation, we'll be providing a background on the planning process, an overview of the plan's proposed objectives, projects, and strategies, and a discussion about the plan's priority watersheds and catalyst projects. We'll begin with an overview of the East Honolulu Watershed Management Plan. The Oahu Water Management Plan is comprised of eight district-level plans being developed by the Board of Water Supply. The East Honolulu Watershed Management Plan is the latest to be developed on Oahu. The Oahu Water Management Plan supplements the Hawaii Water Plan and other state and county policies and regulations to protect our precious water resources. The Oahu Water Management Plan is based on the Native Hawaiian Ahupua model of resource management, which emphasizes the idea that what happens Mauka impacts Makai. This is a holistic resource water management approach that promotes self-sufficient and sustainable communities. The Oahu Water Management Plan is also based on the One Water Approach, which considers the interconnectedness of all water, including ground, storm, waste, recycled, and seawater. This approach provides a collaborative framework for the various agencies to address regional water planning challenges. The East Honolulu Planning District, the area for which the East Honolulu Watershed Plan is applicable, stretches from Kahala to Makapu'u and encompasses 10 different watersheds. Developing the East Honolulu Watershed Plan includes five main phases. Thus far, we have researched and identified key water resource issues in East Honolulu and projected water demand in both 2040 and 2100. We are currently in the phase of developing water management policies, projects, and strategies to address water resource issues identified in phase one. Following this phase, we'll be developing a preliminary public review and eventually final version of the East Honolulu Watershed Management Plan. We have engaged with stakeholders throughout this planning process. Thus far, we have met with 24 community organizations and government agency officials, and also conducted seven neighborhood board presentations and three community meetings. The planning process will run three years in total. As mentioned, we are currently in the third phase of this process, and the final plan is set to be completed by the end of 2021. Now that I've provided background on the planning process, I'm going to turn the attention to the plan's proposed policies, projects, and strategies. All eight district-level plans under the Oahu Water Management Plan share the same five overarching objectives. However, each plan has developed specific policies, projects, and strategies to address water resource issues particular to their district. These key issues were identified through research of existing studies and stakeholder consultations. In East Honolulu, we have identified 23 water resource issues and values for which the plan's projects with champions and general strategies are aligned. As will be described later in the presentation, a select group of projects are categorized as catalyst projects as they provide the energy and connectivity for other projects and programs. As mentioned, there are five overarching objectives to all of Oahu's watershed plans, including number one, promoting sustainable watersheds, number two, protecting and enhancing water quality and quantity, number three, protecting Native Hawaiian rights and traditional customary practices, number four, facilitating public participation, education, and project implementation, and number five, meeting future water demands at a reasonable cost. 
There are 23 district level water resource issues identified in East Honolulu, which fall under eight main themes. Climate change, sea level rise, near shore water quality, water conservation efforts, maintaining traditional and customary practices, flooding and drainage, access to Mauka and Makai areas, and wildfires. In total, there are currently 29 projects with champions, currently being proposed in the East Honolulu Watershed Management Plan. All of these projects are either currently being planned or being implemented by existing champions, either by community organizations or government agencies. These projects are described in further detail on the project's virtual open house. As you can see in this slide, there are nine projects with champions in site-specific locations and 20 projects that are district-wide. This next slide shows the plan's proposed 20 strategies. These strategies are not currently being planned or implemented, but there is interest by community organizations and agencies to support these efforts. Similar to the projects, these strategies are also described in further detail on the project's virtual open house. In the following slides, I'll be showing how the overarching objectives, district water issues, and the policies, projects, and strategies we've developed are all connected. In regards to the first objective of promoting sustainable watersheds, we've identified the issues of the high amount of invasive plants leading to runoff, urban land uses leading to reduced ecosystem diversity, the negative impacts of sea level rise and shoreline armoring, and the district's vulnerability to wildfires. We address these issues in five different sub-objectives, the first three of which address um, increasing native forest restoration, increasing preventative measures to reduce wildfires, and increasing ecosystem diversity in the district's streams and nearshore waters. As you can see, a variety of different projects with champions and strategies help support these goals outlining, outlined in these um, sub-objectives. These efforts include fish pond restoration, stream restoration, watershed protection fences, and many more. In the last two sub-objectives that align with promoting sustainable watersheds, we discuss the need for preparing for the impacts of sea level rise, as well as the need to conserve natural shorelines to protect coastal ecosystems, cultural resources, and public shoreline access. Again, there are a host of different projects with champions as well as strategies that help support these goals outlined in the sub-objectives that include infrastructure planning in the sea level rise exposure area, updating drainage and stormwater master plans, restrictions on shoreline armoring, and many others. For the second objective, protecting and enhancing water quality, we've identified the issues regarding the impaired water quality of Mauna Lua Bay, the high amount of cesspools in the district, the limited water sources in the district, and others. Under this objective, we've identified seven sub-objectives, which include encouraging the use of low-impact development strategies to reduce irrigation demand, improving the water quality of Mauna Lua Bay by capturing stormwater runoff, and improving the water quality of Mauna Lua Bay by increasing the amount of fresh water that enters the bay. Again, there are a range of different projects with champions as well as general strategies that support these sub-objectives, sub including low impact design and green infrastructure guidelines, one water collaboration, trail education programs, and many others. The last four sub-objectives that support protecting and enhancing water quality include reducing the impacts from extreme rain and flooding events, reducing groundwater contamination through cesspool conversion, improving water supply of aquifers, and improving the methods for monitoring and measuring sustainable yield estimates. 
These sub-objectives are supported again by a large range of projects with champions is in general strategies that include the work for water cesspool conversion and restoration of the southern coal laos, among many others. For objective number three, protecting native Hawaiian rights and traditional and customary practices, we've identified issues regarding the fact that nearly all of the district's fish ponds were destroyed in the 20th century and the impacts of the lack of shoreline access. We've also identified values that the community has for the preservation of cultural sites as well as the wish to perpetuate the area's unique history. To address these issues, we've identified four district sub-objectives that include restoration of fish fish ponds and springs for cultural and education educational uses, providing support to community organizations that are stewarding cultural and natural resources, improving public shoreline access, and increasing awareness of Mauna Lua's unique history of water through cultural and educational programs. These sub-objectives are supported by projects such as fish pond restoration, cultural talk stories, as well as restoration strategies that support the restoration of freshwater springs. For objective number four, facilitating public participation, education, and project implementation, we've identified the issues that certain measures to lower the district's water demand will only be effective if the community is engaged and changes their behavior, as well as the effectiveness of watershed projects is dependent upon younger generations being educated to steward water resources. To support objective number four, we've developed three district sub-objectives that include promoting public participation in planning of watershed management projects, providing educational opportunities for the community to learn about protecting and preserving water resources, and collaborating among government agencies, landowners, and other stakeholders. These sub-objectives are supported by such projects as the Ma Malama Mauna Lua programs, the DFM stormwater education and outreach programs, as well as general strategies for trail education programs and climate change and resilience education. Lastly, for objective number five, meeting future water demands at a reasonable cost, we've identified the issues that East Honolulu's per capita water demand is about 34% 30 higher than the island-wide average. The Board of Water Supply water system is aging and needs repairs and upgrades. And the timing and severity of climate change impacts to water supply is yet to be determined. Regarding this objective, we've developed four district sub-objectives, including maintaining and improving the reliability and adequacy of the potable water system, adapting and planning for drought and its impacts on water supply in East Honolulu, impl implementing conservation measures that improve water e efficiency, and through a one water framework, promoting an integrated demand side management of water conservation program. These district sub objectives are supported by projects such as the Board of Water Supply Infrastructure Renewal and Replacement Program, the Board of Water Supply Water Conservation Incentives Program, the One Water Collaboration for Climate Resilience, and strategies such as the Gray Water Reuse Program, among many others. Now that we've discussed the policies, projects, and strategies being proposed for the East Honolulu Watershed Management Plan, I'll now be discussing the catalyst projects being proposed for this plan. For some background, catalyst projects are described as high priority projects that provide energy, connectivity, and inspiration for other watershed projects and programs. Priority watersheds are watersheds that require special protection or enhancement 
of water quality or provide special opportunities for implementing important watershed management actions. In East Honolulu, we are focused on two main catalyst projects, the first of which is improving water quality in Honolulu Bay. We will be focused on this catalyst project in six priority watersheds, including Wailupe, Niu, Kulio'o, Ha'one, Kamila Nui, and Kamila Iki. The second catalyst project is to increase water efficiency in East Honolulu. We are looking to implement this on a district-wide scale. In this next slide, we are visually presenting catalyst project number one, including the project's priority watersheds, as well as the 14 projects with champions, which I am referring to as actions that this catalyst project connects. Again, these actions have been selected as they represent the greatest pollution reduction benefits. Moreover, many of the site-specific actions have been identified by the Monolua Watershed Hui. In the following slides, I'll be describing each of the 14 key actions included under Catalyst Project Number 1 in more detail. The first action for stream restoration is found within the Wailupe Watershed. It includes constructing a regenerative stormwater conveyance system in Wailupe Stream and implementing a neighborhood outreach program. This action is currently being championed by the Mauna Lua Watershed Hui. The next action for watershed retention and infiltration retrofit is found within the Kulio'o Watershed. It includes implementing two flood control structures within Kulio'o Stream, implementing a thousand feet of stream restoration, and redirecting the hardened outfall at the mouth of Kulio'o Stream into Paiko Lagoon. It is also being championed by the Mauna Lua Watershed Hui. The next action is also found within Kuli'o'o Watershed, and it involves restoring the water flow to Kula'ahi Ahi Fish Pond. It is being championed by the Mauna Lua Fish Pond Heritage Center and the DLNR, DLNR Engineering Branch. Next action for watershed Kapuka reforestation is found within the Kamila Nui Watershed. It involves implementing a small re reforestation effort with a focus on reseeding and repopulating certain areas of Kamila Nui with Kapuka. It is also being championed by the Mauna Lua Watershed Hui. The next action for Watershed Sustainable Agricultural Pilot Project is also found in Kamila Nui Watershed. It involves integrating stormwater best management practices into agricultural practices within the properties located just above Kuapa Pond. It is being championed by the Mauna Lua Watershed Hui. The next action, the Kuapa Pond restoration, is also found within Kamila Nui Watershed. It involves restoring and retrofitting the islands in Kuapa Pond with native wetland plants and a combination of floating wetlands and or oyster cages. It also includes reshaping the islands to create small artificial intertidal zones. It is being championed by the Mauna Lua Watershed Hui. The next action, the Keavava Wetland and Heavava Heiau Restoration, is found in the Ha'aone and Kamila Nui watershed. It includes enhancing restoration efforts by planting native trees, restoring Hawaiian shrimp habitat, rechanneling the stormwater from Hawaii Kai Drive that currently drains in the wetland, installing a rain garden, conducting water quality study, and obtaining an easement for the land behind the Oahu Club. This project is currently underway by the livable Hawaii Kai Hui in Monolua.net. The next project for watershed protection fences is found in the Wailupe and Niu watersheds. It involves decreasing erosion in the upper Wailupe and Niu watersheds through ungulate proof fencing, weed removal, restoration work, and long-term monitoring. 
The champions for this project include the Dilanar Dofa and Koolau Mountain Watershed Partnership. The next district-wide action is the Stormwater Utility Oahu, which is meant to incentivize private property owners to implement low-impact development and green infrastructure by imposing a fee based on the amount of impervious surface on a property. The champion for this pro project is the Department of Facility Maintenance. The next district-wide action are drainage system updates. This includes capturing debris and pollutants by improving the drainage system through automatic retractable screens, baffle boxes, and other technologies. The champion for this project is the Department of Facility Maintenance. The next district-wide action are the programs being catalyzed by Malama Monalua. This includes community outreach and restoration programs to improve water quality of Monalua Bay, including the Huki, Huki Project, which is ongoing, the Planted Tree Save the Sea Project, which is also ongoing, and the Follow the Drop mobile app, which is set to begin in summer 2021. The next district-wide action are the stormwater and education outreach programs being championed by the Department of Facility Maintenance. This includes pro community programs to educate and engage residents, businesses, and schools in improving water quality through programs such as Adopt a Stream or Adopt a Block, as well as the Stormwater Public School Curriculum. The next district-wide action is the Wastewater Long Range Master Plan for the Treatment System com e Capacity Expansion and Infrastructure Renewal and Replacement. This includes updating the wa Wastewater Long Range Master Plan to increase the resilience of the wastewater system in accordance to the Mayor's Directive on Climate Change. This is being championed by the City Department of Environmental Services. Last district-wide action includes updating the drainage and stormwater management long-range master plan to increase resilience of the drainwater system in accordance with the mayor's directive on climate change. This project is being championed by the Department of Design and Construction as well as the Department for Facilities Maintenance. Next, we turn to catalyst project number two which again is increasing water efficiency in East Honolulu. This catalyst project includes two key actions, the Board of Water Supply Infrastructure Renewal and Replacement Program, as well as the Board of Water Supply Water Conservation Incentive Program. The Board of Water Supply Infrastructure Renewal and Replacement Program includes reducing the amount of water main breaks by making infrastructure investments and by 2030 replacing 21 miles of pipeline every year. This project is currently underway by the Board of Water Supply. Similarly, the Board of Water Supply Water Conservation Incentives Program is also underway. It includes incentivizing Board of Water Supply customers to implement water efficiency measures, such as the Water Sensible Rebate Program and the Water, Sem water Smart Programs. As the last part of this presentation, I'll be discussing a few ways that you can stay involved in the East Honolulu Watershed Management Plan process. As mentioned before, we have four community meetings as part of this planning process, and we are currently in the third community meeting. We are planning to have another community meeting in spring 2021 to describe the public review draft. If you have any questions or comments on this planning process or this presentation in particular, you may contact Barry Usagawa at the Board of Water Supply, or Melissa May, at the project manager at SSFM, at the phone number or email provided on this slide. Of course, we are also taking input on the virtual open house provided for this community meeting 
or we are also taking input at the project page provided by the Board of Water Supply, and the URL is provided on this slide. We wanted to thank you so much for joining um, for this presentation, and we are very much looking forward to your input about the projects, policies, and strategies developed for the East Honolulu Watershed Management Plan, and we encourage you to explore the virtual open house and provide your input. Thank you and take care.